Today for New Music Monday, we're going to look at the brand new record from Sia Furler, and it's called 1000 Forms of Fear. This is Sia's first solo album in about four years, and for someone who makes as much a point to stay completely out of the spotlight as she does, tons of people all across the globe have been anxiously awaiting this record. Her lead up to this record has been uniquely brilliant, as she's taken the idea of media avoidance to an entirely new level. If you didn't know, she's been having other people, dancers, famous people perform her songs while she sings, usually not facing the audience or in a completely different room. And I think that works on a lot of levels for her, as well as bringing to light a number of questions on the authenticity of performance and what music is all about. Anyway, I can absolutely remember the very first time I heard Sia's voice when she was singing with Zero Seven. I instantly sought out all of the work she'd ever done, and it's been a really huge progression over the years from that almost ambient sound to the crazy dance songs she's been making lately. Now, Chandelier was the big single for a reason. It does a good job of representing the songs on this album. And the track Free the Animal plays a really good partner to that track, and if you like one, you're gonna like them both. But I will say it sort of reeks of Lady Gaga at points, and I'm in no way comparing the two. I would never do that. Sia is in a class all her own. But once you hear these two songs, I think you're going to understand, so I guess I am actually comparing the two of them. Sorry. But make no mistake about it, this record is a clear continuation from her last record. And after you listen to it a number of times, you're going to realize that this is a very rare occasion, as this is the exact record she clearly wanted to make. You can hear her love all over this, and it's obvious she really didn't care what anybody else thought about it. There are pop style, club tracks, right alongside more melodic, more introspective songs. And while this record really lacks in any sort of consistent flow, the songs individually are good enough that it doesn't ruin the record. I think what it comes down to is that this record is a clear example of an artist truly in progress and capturing that idea on record. There are hints of her old sound and some signs of where she wants to go, and this is sort of a crossroads record, a middle ground if you will. You can really see the creative search happening on every track, and in a lot of ways, that in itself is exciting. I guess that's also a nicer way of me saying this album isn't great. I was hoping it would be, but it's not. But it's not bad either. If you're in love with Sia's voice, which you should be, there's plenty to enjoy on this album. But at the same time, there are a number of absolute throwaway songs on here, but you have to understand, she's clearly in transition, so there's going to be some stumbles in that sort of artistic pursuit. She's clearly making songs that she wants first, and the fans enjoying them is kind of secondary, and you can hear it. But when you really think about it, that's kind of the case on every one of her records, so this isn't that much of an anomaly for the Sia catalog. There's a great diversity in terms of the array arrangements, in terms of the overall mood, and Sia really touches on everything she feels like. Because she definitely represents one of those overly creative people who just doesn't get the exposure that they clearly deserve. But above all else, there's one huge issue that I had with this record that, for lack of a better term, bummed me out. I feel the way that a lot of these songs were recorded and mixed did a huge disservice to Sia's voice, which is her strongest attribute. Her voice is so powerful and just stunning when it's let loose, and a lot of these songs, well, they kind of cage that up. Sure, there are a couple moments where she lets loose and lets her voice soar, but there just aren't enough of those for me. I feel like she held back, and with a voice like hers, there's just no reason to do that. All in all, this is an enjoyable record that has a handful of really cool moments, and I think what you can take from this is that her next record is going to be a masterpiece. Hopefully that one will take less than four years to record, but you can't rush genius, can ya? And on the Bite or Borrow It, A Thousand Forms of Fear is a solid borrow it. There's some really cool moments and some songs that are really great for the summer, and hey, it's summertime, so go check it out. So that's what I got for you guys today. I hope you dug it. If you did, go ahead and click subscribe, leave a comment, click like, whatever you want to do. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook right here, and I'll see you guys again next time. Whoa!